Today we're fishing out of Waveland, Mississippi. We're headed to the marsh in search of redfish. If we can catch some specks and flounder, that'd be great, but the target is redfish. It's really cold today, but we're excited to get out and try for some fish. Neither one of us have been able to fish in the last couple weeks, so we're happy to get out. The water level in the marsh has been really low, and we're fishing an outgoing tide. We're a little bit concerned about being able to get where we want to to fish, but we're going to give it a try because the people that have been able to get into the marsh have been catching some really nice fish. Oh, and did I tell you, it's cold. And one more thing before we get started. I have to go ahead and admit this. Chris kicked my butt. He gave me a real beatdown, and the beating started early. What you got? A whole redfish. You're running like a red anyway. Let me get out of your way. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. Some nice one. Let me get, let me get his head up. He's trying to let him do his thing. Unfortunately, the camera work is not very good in this video. This is the first time I fished in the front of the boat with the driver, and I can't seem to get the camera set right to pick up the action. I've got a lot of work to do to figure this one out. Skunk is out of the boat. Chris has himself a nice redfish, and he is going to be about how big. 24 and a half. Yeah, I see him. Alligator guard. Saw a short stubby nose. That's something I don't want to tangle with. Be a lot of fun to, to catch, but mess up you mess up your rig this was an amazing sight to see it really got us pumped up but for some reason we couldn't connect with them and we saw them more than once we just could not figure out how to catch them just a few minutes later they came back still didn't catch one we didn't know what to do this was really frustrating jigging around till one of them decides he wants this well that was just wishful thinking I never did catch one of these Chris did manage to catch one out of that school but that was the end of it Swing. and that is keeper number two keeper number two for Chris nice I ain't got a bite yet, and you're one fish away from the limit. Even though we saw that school of reds one more time, we didn't get another bite. We fished for about another hour, then we left the marsh. We were limited how far we can go into all of the different drainages, and it just got too difficult to fish. At least that's two good reds, and it's still pretty early. We've got time to recover and find some more fish. We fished a few places on the way back to the boat ramp. I got something. Nope. It's got a little fight to it. Hope it's a big flounder. Cause I don't think it's a red. Is that what they do? Sheep's head. Those things fight pretty good. Oh, look at that fish. He got people teeth. <laughs> Well, that was fun. I liked him. 13 three quarters. He's got to be 14. This is well, well, let's see if there's another one over there. <laughs> so we took a long lunch and made our way over to the Biloxi Small Craft Harbor. We stopped for a minute to get us some frozen shrimp, and then we were off. So how much for you to tell us what he's biting at? <laughs> about a rock, about a bridge and that. Yeah. Local bait and tackle shops are always a good place for information, and this guy was no exception. What you got? Bring him on in. Ooh, little flounder. Bingo! Bingo! That's a ticket to the house, is what that is. 19 more of those. I think we fished a half mile of those pilings. We keep working our way along this wall using jigs, gulp, jigs with shrimp, 
and we just can't seem to make anything happen. It seems like we're doing the right thing, except for the fact that we're not catching fish or even getting bites. Up ahead, we see two guys that are catching fish, and, you know, we're going to talk to them. No, I mean, I think that they know something we don't know. We saw them catch one already. I caught one when we went by a while ago. I'm sure they've done this before. I mean, they got the barnacle scraper, so they know something. Is it a depth, and you just you find your likely spot, and you just wait? I don't know what they're doing. I figure if you watched them, you could figure it out. We decided to slow down, but it's not because we wanted to fish slower. It's because we wanted to watch these guys and try to figure out what they were doing. What you got? Oh, yeah. He's ever been as long as that other one. Now that's his second keeper flounder. He's just showing off. And well, I can't even get anything to steal my bait. I have to say that talking to these two gentlemen was the highlight of the trip for me. Chris and I learned a lot about catching sheephead from these two. Very friendly, great fishermen, and they were eager to teach us. It's happy to be in the right spot today, man. Yeah. Yes, so what's the key? Are you off the bottom or? They eat. They eat these barnacles. So y'all scraping them off? Yeah, we scrape them off and just sit here and. We fish right by the barnacles, that's where they're at, way down at the bottom. All the way? Sir. Just a little bit, huh? Four inches, something like that. Yeah. Okay. A second ago, man, they were biting, man. We didn't even have time to do nothing. Yeah. All we've, all we've caught over here is a couple of flounder and some croakers. How do you cook them? In the oven, you leave the skin, you leave all, you leave all that how it is and just uh, clean the inside the stomach. Yeah. You throw it in the oven, and as soon as you take out the skin, the scales and everything come off and the meat's all in the center. It's juicy, man. My dad and stuff with Vietnamese seasoning. Just this guy. Look at that. Y'all gonna get it. Yeah. Well, let's and be we still. we stick right here and we just beat the barnacles off. Yeah. How long does it take for them to find the barnacles that you scraped? Like, uh, ten minutes. That's ten it. Five minutes. Really? Well, yes, star scraping. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Wow, look at that. Yeah, we, we caught one a second ago, like 21, 22 inches. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, I caught one early. He was short. <laughs> 13 and three quarters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, man. That was terrible. You would have kept it. Yeah. These guys were great sportsmen. They were eager to talk to us, teach us what they knew, and they kept catching fish the whole time. Okay. Man. You ain't got to tell me twice. Chris had a red metal broom pole in his boat. That became our version of a barnacle scraper. We couldn't scrape very many barnacles at a time, but it was something, and it did attract a few fish. We're going to try to learn if y'all don't mind. Oh, no, no, y'all, 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 y'all good where y'all at, my man. I want y'all to try one, man. I, I, I I'm excited about it myself. Do you jig or just hold it and wait? Hold it and wait. Just hold it and wait. Okay. Awesome. They're a good hard bite. Man, it's a fun pull. Yep. I mean, just as far as the bite itself. Man, they, they will nibble on it just like real slight, man. Okay. Oh, man. <laughs> He's strong. Wow. Man, they, they give it just a little tiny nibble, man. They'll really? You barely feel it. Y'all using live bait too? Well, frozen shrimp. Okay. Oh, it's got a bump. They're, they're starting to find us. Yeah. Oh, they're going to find you, all right. You got a keeper? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. yeah there we go. Good, good one, good one. You want the net? You going to swing him? No, you can get the net on this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's strong. I ain't even seen him yet. Woo get him up. That's a good one there. Oh, yeah. Y'all gonna enjoy that one. You gonna land that fish? <laughs> Man, he's strong. Wow. That's a good one. You don't have to measure him. 
Watch them teeth. Man, that's a big joker there. Oil in a pot, anything. I just sit there and let him, he nibbled it and I just let him go with it. All right, check it, man. Man, I'm just snake bit. I'm feeling pretty dejected right now. My elbows on my knees, my head down. But here comes one. Oh, yeah. There we go. Get him in daylight, huh, man? Oh, ho, ho, he feels good. Get him. Uh, he's bringing me. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I could bring him. No, nah, you got him. Come on, baby. There he comes. Oh, ho, ho, that's a big one. You first never had to be huge. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Look at that big thing. Did you a little adrenaline, huh? Man, that's fun. You're right, he's the good pull. He's still, he's still, uh, pull. Look at that thing. Wow. Man, he is huge. Guys, I appreciate y'all teaching us this. No, no, don't say that. And y'all are awesome. And they bite so soft. Yeah. There we go, Daddy. Man, what a big one. Wow. Let me get one more and we can go home, Daddy. He's been ready to go home. He's like, man, let's go to the house. Man. Yeah, you gotta get that limit though, right? There he is. Come out of there. Yeah. Oh, another good one. Oh, yeah. I don't think he's as big as the other one, but he's good. Enough, huh? Yep. I'm gonna swing him. Yeah. Okay, I won't do that again. Whenever you're catching toothy critters like sheep's head, you need to check your line every time you catch a fish. Look for nicks and frays. I did not do it. That's a stupid mistake. It's not like I don't know what happens. Uh huh. Bring him. Another good one. Yeah, he's pretty big. Just lip him like you do a bass. <laughs> Those teeth are something else, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, you need a new jig because that one's finished. The father was getting really tired. That last fish was very slow to come for him. Oh, yeah. So he went ahead and cranked the motor up and he was getting ready to go. And then the son catches the last fish while he's cranking the motor. Very nice. All right. Hey, it was nice to meet you. Nice to meet you guys too. Thank you very much for your help. That's good people, man. You, hey, y'all too. It's really easy to get caught up in equipment and buying expensive boats with big motors and the finest rods and reels. And I've noticed these guys have older equipment. That's a two horse outboard. And some of their reels I've seen in antique stores before. But these guys are fishermen. They know their fish, they know their baits, they know when and where to go, and they catch fish. It's weird, but all the research I did online and whatnot, is a live bait. Hope you guys have a good time, man. God bless you guys. Y'all you, too. You getting ready to net my fish? I wish I had let you net one a while ago. I'm upset about that. That was a good fish. Ooh, a nice one. We're going to net him. doesn't seem to be any current right now either i know i got 12 minutes worth of filming on this car and i made the wrong decision i just turned my camera off when it ran out that proved to be a mistake i stopped filming right there i thought we were done fishing the tide had stopped but chris had one more location in mind so we stopped by there on the way back to the harbor we started catching redfish almost immediately 
and then the bite picked up quickly. At one time, I think we were catching a redfish every cast, but they were almost all rat reds. And of course, Chris caught three more keeper reds. How many did Jim catch? Zero. I did not catch a single keeper red all day long. Between us, in that last place, we caught about 30 to 40 redfish. Only three were keepers. And I didn't catch one of them. That's fishing. The beatdown continued even till the very end. So we'll end right here. Whenever you get a chance, go outside, see something beautiful, do something fun, and share it with someone that you care about.